All right, it is time to rank the Straw Hat Pirates from One Piece. Uh, I get asked this question a lot, and my answers have changed over the years as certain arcs have come and gone. Different Straw Hats have gone up and down on the list. So right now, here's a time-stamped answer. I'm sure by the end of One Piece, it'll maybe be a different list, but it'll probably be pretty similar, I think, to where the list lies right now. I think this has been pretty... Not constant, because certainly some Straw Hats have changed over the years, but uh, uh, I think it's going to be pretty close. So anyway, let's get down to it. We got 10 Straw Hats, and uh, obviously, big spoilers for One Piece. I uh, don't watch this video, stupid, if you want, if you don't want to be spoiled. Number 10 is going to be Brooke, and I think Brooke will be the worst. Not, I, don't, I hesitate to say worst, because I don't dislike Brooke. But he'll always be the bottom tier for me, just because one of the latest Straw Hats, right? And his introduction is very strong. I love his, you know, backstory with Laboon. It's very sad, and you know, he's a fun character, but a couple things against him for me. One, the whole, like, I'm a pervert shtick really gets fucking old. And uh, I don't, I don't need this weird skeleton asking to see people's panties. It, it's not funny to me. It's just stupid. And the fact that he's a little one note for me. He's got, what, skeleton jokes, he has silly little things. We already have a swordsman, so we don't even, he doesn't even really differentiate himself that way. Yeah, he's got the spirit stuff, which is neat, but I usually focus on the personality and, I don't know, Brooke to me is just sort of a one note sort of joke character. I'm kind of surprised he joined the crew, and uh, I honestly could have done without him. If I'm being totally honest, he doesn't really add anything to the crew that I feel like was necessary. A little harsh, I guess, now that I'm saying all this out loud. Because again, I, I like Brooke, but definitely my least favorite. Number nine is going to be Chopper. Chopper, again, a lot of the Straw Hats, if not all of them, have amazing emotional backstories. And Chopper's backstory is soul-crushingly sad with, you know, Hitherlook and that whole thing. And, you know, end of um, Drum Island is a beautiful tear-jerking moment. And then Chopper gets less to do as time goes on. One big thing is that uh, his design gets worse, in my opinion. I like fat, chonky Chopper. He's cute. He's kind of uggo, you know, with his animal-like features. And I love that. He's just cute. He's a, just a big old, big old weird animal. And now he's just, like, he's been you know, sort of simplified into like a, almost like Pikachu doll. I don't know. it. That and he just has less to do as time goes on. Yeah, they give him different little forms here and there, but ultimately he's, he's just there to be cute and that's fine. You know, I, I don't mind that. He doesn't get a whole lot to do. That's really the bottom line is he doesn't get a whole lot to do. He can't really fight that well. He gets to doctor it up sometimes, but... Eh, still love him, but he's bottom tier for me. Number eight is a character I really like. Uh, I just wish they were given more to do, and that's Robin. I think Robin's sense of humor is great, like how she's this very dry, you know, dry sense of humor and has like weird like tastes, like she loves like cute things. She like hates Frankie's like combining and thriller bark. You know, she has really funny moments. Her whole backstory is amazing and you know, Ennius Lobby is just wonderful, but since Ennius Lobby, she gets less and less to do. I wish they would, you know, Oda would let her fight more. Her abilities are a little silly, you know, something like, by the time we got like hand wings, I was like, okay, I guess we can just kind of do whatever we want here. I feel like she's just really underserved. So it's not a fault of the character, because the character is really fun, like her mature sort of like, she's like the mom. She's the mom of the crew. Frankie's the dad. So personality-wise, backstory-wise, everything's great. It's just, she doesn't get a lot to do. I think a big sort of thing with the Straw Hat Pirates as time goes on is, if I'm being totally honest, like, the period where it's, like, Luffy, Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji. If it had just been those five for the rest of the show, or, or manga, or whatever, I think that's a pretty good dynamic. And I love other Straw Hats, and you'll see, because some of them are, you know, higher than some of those members. But as you add more members as time goes on, you gotta split the screen time, e you know, equally. 
and you get less of those more intimate, you know, moments where it's like a smaller crew. Number seven is a straw hat that has definitely dropped over time for me, and that's Usopp. Usopp used to be maybe top five, even top three. Around uh, Soga King times with like uh, Water 7, NES Lobby, even Thriller Bark, Usopp's amazing. His arc against Luffy where he fights Luffy and then like, you know, rebuilds himself and all his cowardly fights are just so fun and you always root for Usopp. And then the time skip, I feel like, changed some characters for the worse for me. Making Usopp really ripped doesn't really work for me. Like, I, the whole point is that he's like kind of like this noodly Looney Tunes character just struggling to get by. The plants thing, I can I can completely take or leave. I think it's just kind of random. But the most damning thing for Usopp for me was Dress Rosa. He basically abandons the little, what are they called? Tontatans, the little fairy, fairy kids. He like runs away and abandons them when they need his help. This is something that to me is completely unforgivable for Usopp's arc. Usopp's whole arc is that he's a coward and he's very legitimately scared, but he always like gets into the fight to help other people because it's right. It is the right thing to do and he gets through it despite his fear and his weakness. And in that moment, it just felt like, is this like fucking early, early Usopp from like the first arc? This sucks. I was legitimately pissed off. It was such a, I felt like a betrayal of the character, and it knocked him down permanently several notches for me. I feel like since then, he's never had to, like, really tackle that sort of fear. Such a waste of character development. Still, you know, I still like Usopp. He's funny, but, oh man, just has really gone down over the years for me. Next up is a character that has gone up for me because of one arc, and that's Sanji. Sanji used to be very low tier. And here's the problem with Sanji. Early Sanji is so cool. Baratier, Arabasta, uh, Little Garden. Sanji is always like going off on his own little adventures and, being, and then coming in like, hey guys, like I did this cool shit and just having cool moments like Mr. Prince. And then he became just this walking joke of like, oh, like I like hot girls and nosebleeds and some of the worst moments for him are Fishman Island, where he needs fucking blood because he loses it from a nosebleed. Like, that sucked. Literally learning how to fly because he's scared of gay people. That's a real bad, that's a real low for Sanji. I don't know. Like, especially considering, like, in my, because in my headcanon, he, he's basically gay for Zoro. But anyway, that's my headcanon. But, 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 Whole Cake Island gave him not only some great backstory, but also some great character conflict with Luffy, awesome development, you know, a really interesting relationship with Pudding, and that has helped him climb back up to where he is now for me. He used to be real low, but now he's back to a pretty good spot. I don't think he's gonna be able to overtake the ones above him at this point, but that's just because I love those characters that are above him. Let me just double check. Yeah, the, uh, the top five are like, I think those are gonna be my top five until the end. But he's climbed up, and it's Whole Cake was a big thing, and you know, Soba Mask, you know. He's getting to have cool moments again. I feel like after the reveal of Diablo Jamble, or whatever the fuck it is in NES Lobby, that was like the last, oh, Sanji's awesome moment. And then it was just this period of shit. And now he's gone back up, and I'm like, okay, Sanji, you deserve the number six spot now. And I mean, you've definitely beaten Usopp at this point. Usopp. Come on. It's been like almost the opposite watching Usopp fall and Sanji rise. Number five is Luffy. I mean, I've always liked Luffy, and Luffy has just gotten better and better over time. And especially after, you know, Ace dies and he has to like look, deal with loss, real actual loss and grief. And in the new world, he approaches things still with, you know, a lot of glee, a lot of joy. But he has a more level headed approach to stuff. He actually thinks, takes things more seriously. Which is something I think early Luffy, that's one of his flaws, right? Is that he's a little too goofy, a little too uh, lackadaisical, just sort of whatever, you know, doesn't care about the consequences. And then once, you know, your brother gets a hole punched through him, then you start to go, oh, oh yeah, I guess I should uh, take uh, <laughs> things a little more seriously. But, you know, still a hilarious character, but with the maturity he's gotten over the years, 
Uh, my boy, he's at a strong five. I think he's a great character, great protagonist, for especially for something as crazy as One Piece. And the fact that he always sticks to his guns, you know, no matter what, has always like the most appealing part of the character. Number four is Frankie. Frankie is like the dad, you know, and he's great. He, you know, what I love about Frankie is he's super silly, loves just dumb shit like his nipple lights and all that stuff, but he's a very caring, compassionate guy. And he's also like kind of responsible. You know, in Dress Rosa, there's this fun dynamic where like Luffy like has to, you know, Frankie's almost like Luffy's dad. He's like, come on, Luffy, you gotta, you know, make sure we uh, stay on track, that sort of thing. So I love that sort of balance that he can be really silly you know, he's a walking bunch of toys in a man's body, but he also takes things seriously and, you know, it is hot-blooded and, like, you know, can, like, put up a fight. Frankie's compassion to me is one of the most endearing traits of his, is that he just cares for others so much and will cry of just because he feels for them. Number three is Jinbei. Jinbei fucking rules. He's only number three just because he hasn't had as much screen time. But ever since his introduction in Impel Down, like, he's just always been so cool. And I love him in uh, Wano. Like, he has a fun relationship with Nico Robin, you know, where they, you know, get to be a little goofy. I'm excited to see Jinbei in more silly situations and more interactions with the crew. Because before, just as, like, an ally to Luffy, he was fucking badass and awesome. And now getting to see the goofy side of Jinbei is really, really satisfying. But I mean, come on, design-wise he's great, you know, he's an awesome fighter, his fights are fun to watch, and he's just a nice, cool dude. He's everybody's fish grandpa. Uncle? Grandpa? Grandpa. I guess Brooke's a grandpa. But Brooke sucks. Number two, we got my girl Nami. And Nami, first off, one of the most heartbreaking backstories. Like, Belmare's death is really brutal. But what I love about Nami is that she's, you know, always been like the voice of reason someone who will slap someone over like oh you dummy that sort of thing that sort of <laughs> uh uh woman appeals to me i guess uh, i guess that says a lot about me but she can like have like her own silly parts as well to her i like the weather stuff a lot that was like an interesting unexpected sort of development that's let, let her like have more things to do over time like i feel like nami has been given the screen time that she deserves I wish Robin, I could say the same for Robin. But Nami is great. Also just really funny. You know, I've always liked that she's not one of the stronger ones. So like she and Usopp had this fun dynamic of like, they were always really scared. But she can still put up a fight too, if necessary. I just find her not only entertaining, but like strong-willed. She's a fucking hottie. So number, number two for me. I love Nami as a character. And finally number one, Zoro. I mean, come on. The guy's a fucking badass. Maybe a little too badass, but that's not a problem in my book. The fact that he is, you know, so cool. I just recently rewatched his backstory episode. It's really heartbreaking. I will say these days he kind of wins fights a little too easily. But what I've always loved is his undeterred loyalty to Luffy. Like it, when Usopp decides to leave the crew, Zoro is very much like, gotta follow the captain. And that to me is Zoro's most endearing trait, is that... Ever since Luffy saved him, uh, Zoro trusts Luffy 100%. Even if Luffy's decisions may not always seem like the right decisions to other people, he always has his captain's back. That loyalty to me is what makes me love Zoro as a character. Because he's my favorite One Piece character. That, and he's so stupid. Like, the fact that he's just a big old dunce cap, like, he gets lost all the time, kind of a meathead. He's got that himbo edge to him. That's only a bonus in my book. Then he lost an eye and we don't know why. Like, there's just so many facets to this character that are so entertaining for me. And he's a hottie too. He's always been entertaining no matter what. So that's why Zoro is my numero uno. All right, that was my current ranking of the Straw Hats. This may change over time, but I think by the end it'll be probably pretty close to this. With that said, if we get some arc where like, uh, Chopper or Robin or even Brooke gets to really shine as the focus. I welcome that 100%. I would love to see more of the characters get more shining big moments. Right now, there's a lot of shit going on, so you know, it kind of feels like they have to, like, they're like, they're all sort of running with like this big overarching plot. Uh, but if we get some more cool badass moments for characters or focuses on arcs, 
this list will change, but until that's also the joy of One Piece, right? You never know what will uh, be thrown at us character-wise. But otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.